Hello, greetings. In this tutorial, we will learn how to draw the plan value line or a project baseline. And we will learn what it is and why it is important and how do we go about it. So it is uh, used for monitoring schedule and costs using the earned value analysis technique. So plan value is uh, one of the most important concepts within the earned value analysis. Without a plan value, you cannot uh, undertake earned value management. So that's the very first step you would do uh, while undertaking earned value to draw the PV line. So PV or a plan value is an important tool for measuring performance. It helps you uh, develop a baseline and you can then use it to uh, identify any deviations and PV can be used to generate cash flow statements from the uh, project. Now development of the uh, plan value line how do we go about it first of all the objective it serves as a sort of a anchor point for measuring the performance a planned cost and expected schedule against which actual cost and schedule are measured. It provides you with a baseline and you can see how you are performing against that baseline. Are you under budget, ahead of schedule? Uh, uh, so it provides you with a key anchor point. Uh, it's a basis for cash flow and avoiding progress payments. Uh, so we uh, agree with the owners what's the payment uh, plan to ensure that the uh, contractors and managers uh, uh, are not left out of cash and, and it's a key, key uh, thing in managing cash flows. It provides a summation of time phase budgets, uh, cost accounts as some work packages along a project baseline and within the baseline we can include a number of different costs including labor cost, equipment cost, material cost and project di direct overhead costs. So in this example we will see how do we go about uh, doing so let's see how do we go about drawing a, a plan value line. So the very first step is to complete the forward pass and the backward pass calculations. And uh, so you can see uh, we have got um, the forward pass indicating in the early start and the early finish times and the logical relationship or a precedence diagram. And we have got uh, completed the backward pass here indicating the uh, late finish and the late start time and the float, which is calculated by uh, subtracting the late start time from the late finish time, which is take five, take away five uh, uh, is indicated in the box uh, in the middle. Uh, so you can see that this activity is critical because it has got a zero float and likewise this activity is critical and so is the case with this activity whereas others have got some float. So for instance activity C has got a float of two. Now let's see uh, how to draw a baseline. So we can uh, see the budgetary requirements for activity A. The total budget for activity A is uh, 40 grants. So 40 uh, is the total budget uh, for activity B. You can do a summation of all these figures and the total budget is uh, 32. And likewise for activity C, the total budget is 48. And so excuse my handwriting, uh, activity uh, D, the total budget is 18. And for activity E, the total budget is 28. And for activity uh, F, the total budget is 40. Now we would see how uh, uh, the budget is split. So for activity A, the split is uh, an equal $10,000 per week. So uh, the activity A is the very first activity. So we can start creating a cost loaded bar chart by putting in these values for the first four weeks. You can see the activity B is also a uh, very starting activity. It doesn't depend on any other activity. It has a duration of uh, five weeks and the budgetary allocation is 84848 for the five weeks. So we just put in 8, 4, 8, 4, uh, eight. And you can see that activity C uh, depends on uh, completion of activity A. So C could start from this point over here and C has a budget of 12, 12, 12 uh, for the first four weeks. This is reflected here. Activity D depends on completion of activity A and B as indicated by these two arrows. So we have to wait till month six to begin work on activity D and the budgetary provisions are six, uh, triple two, and six and for activity e the budgetary provisions are eight eight and twelve and it only depends on activity b so it is starting at this location 
uh, with 8, uh, 8, and 12. And activity F is the last activity uh, which would take place only once uh, all of the activities have completed and it has got a budget of 20, 20. Right, so we have uh, loaded our uh, bar chart with the cost and now we would do the uh, total budgetary requirements. So for, uh, you can see here, it is 18 here, uh, 14 for month two, and then 18, 14, 20, 26, 22, and 26, 2, 6, 20, and 20. So we can see the total budget for this uh, entire project is 206. And now we could do the cumulative value, uh, which would be 18. And then 18 add 14. Uh, and that would be 28, 32. And then 22 add 18. So by end of month 3, the cumulative requirement would be uh, 50. Moving on, 50 add 14, 64. 64 add 20, 84. 84 at 26, uh, so that would be 110, 110 at 22, 132, 132 at 26, 158, 160, 166, 186, and 206. So that's the cumulative. Uh, budgetary requirement. Once we have got this value, we would just use uh, uh, to draw a line. So we can see that for the first month, it's less than 30, uh, getting slightly above 30 by end of month two, uh, getting close to 50 by month three, uh, getting to 64 by end of month four, 84. So just below 90 here, 110. So this would be towards the middle here and 132. Uh, just above 120, 158, and 160, 180. So likewise, you would create your plan value line, which would provide you with a nice way to, uh, to compare your progress against. So once you have got the actual spending data available, you could plot your uh, actual spend line uh, and see whether if, if it is uh, if your actual spending is below the planned value, it would indicate that you are uh, under spending, and if it is above the planned value line, it would mean that you are overspending. Thank you.